Hello again. Welcome to the Happy Heat Pump podcast. We're just fascinated in heat pumps here. The idea is to replace our gas boilers with heat pumps over the next uh, couple of decades. That's, what, 25 million heat pumps to be installed? It's got to be a big deal, hasn't it? Well, I'm Evan Davis. I work for the world's greatest broadcaster. This has nothing to do with them. It's a side hustle. I'm with Bean Beanland, director, a director at the Heat Pump Federation, the man who knows everything about heat pumps. And you know what our topic is today? It's hot water. How do you heat your water? Now, Bean, what happens is this is most of us have a gas boiler. Most of us have a gas boiler that just heats the water when we use it. It'll heat as much as we want to use and it all works very comfortably. Heat pumps, well, they don't, they don't do it that way. And I, I know we've said we're not going to do too much physics, but what is it about heat pumps that means you don't use heat pumps to heat up your water as you use it? Well, actually, uh, as I said, you know, it's a, it's panto season. Oh, yes, they do. There are heat pumps that do instantaneous hot water, actually, Evan. It's just that they are very expensive. Uh, and the flow rate that one gets out of them is limited. In fact, the flow rate you get out of your combi boiler is also limited. If you had a house with six bathrooms, you would not want a combi boiler because it wouldn't be able to keep up with the demand. So the, the thing about hot water demand is it's still going up. Heating demand we're driving down as we better insulate our homes, even retrospectively. But with new build, of course, we're driving the, the, the thermal demands down. But we're now building homes. You know, you build a three bedroom home, it's now got four bathrooms. We build a six bedroom home, it's now got seven bathrooms. But people are actually showering more, bathing less. Haha, that's actually less hot water, not more hot water. But as the heating engineer, we've got to make provision for when the house is full. So it's not enough to say, well, I just live here with my wife and we only shower once a fortnight. That's not a solution from the heat pump, from the, from the heating the, system. You're selling the heat pump. The truth is, most people are going to rip out what is called a combi gas boiler and they're going to put in a hot water tank that is going to be preheated hot water. When the 12 of them have had their shower, it's going to be running out and you're going to say, you've used all hot water. That is basically the experience people are going to have and they're going to go, and I know that experience because that's what we had when I was a child. Then we all moved to combi boilers. It's like we now have as much hot water as we want and you my friend, are going to take us back to a world where we do not have unlimited hot wars. Would I do that to you? First of all, let's stop talking about ripping. There's no ripping to be done. We're not ripping out boilers. Okay, Boilers will get replaced as they need replacing. Um, we don't want any of those uh, uh, party manifestos around here. Thank you very much. So uh, we are not going back because what you described is the old scenario where your hot water was on a timer and if you emptied the cylinder, you had to wait for the hot water timer to bring your boiler on to start filling your hot water cylinder again. In our world, we don't do that. In our world, typically, hot water will be prioritized. So the heat pump will be watching the cylinder, the controller will be watching the cylinder. And as you start drawing off hot water, when it reaches a certain trigger point, and that can be set by the installer, the heat pump will point its compressor, so its output, at the hot water cylinder, so you keep up with demand. So we're not going back to that scenario where you run your hot water on a timer scenario where you could potentially you could potentially run out. That isn't to say that some people won't run it on a timer. And some people may choose to run it on a timer because we're in the world of time of use tariffs. Right. So you can heat, so you can look, you heat it up at night. Yeah. Or if you have solar PV on your roof, when the sun comes out during the day and you're not heating the house, you'll say, quick, divert the effort into the hot water cylinder. So all those sorts of things are beginning to um, change the nuanced way that we run the controls. But fundamentally, it is not heat a tank of hot water wait till it runs out and then start again. Right, so you that really in the early history. Okay, so you can heat it up as you go um, and then you don't run out. And you probably could run out if everybody, if 12 of you had a shower in the morning and because it's going to take time to heat it up again, isn't it? It, it, would be, it would be pretty extreme, but I think that where we've got to be very careful is with very small heat loads 
So if you've got a very small heat load, highly insulated building, and therefore you put in a relatively low capacity uh, heat pump, then you've got to think carefully about how you design for hot water. Right. So we used to have a scenario where the houses leaks heat. You put in a big heat pump to cope with the fact that the house leaks heat. You've by default got capacity to do all the hot water you need. As we start to better insulate the home, we can potentially put in smaller heat pump devices. And bear in mind, combi boilers typically are around 28 to 35 kilowatts in power. But the average heat demand in those homes is probably 8 to 10 kilowatts. So they're massively overpowered from a heating perspective, which is just why they're so inefficient when they that can give you a lot of it can give you a lot of hot water there. Right. There is another alternative, which is you use the heat pump for heating up the home, and you just use an immersion heater for the the, 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 the hot water. So you're you're not using super eco heat. You're just buying heat, electric heat, which is perfectly doable. It's perfectly doable, particularly as if you've got PV on the roof. And there are lots of people who have diverters straight to an immersion. So they don't run the heat pump. They run the PV straight to the immersion, which is, again, perfectly valid. You know, you just need to be confident that your means you're running your house in an overall efficient way. But I I still think it's unpleasant in the very crowded United Kingdom in particular, where we're densely populated and property is phenomenally expensive, to think I am giving up a little piece of this floor space, which I bought to a tank that I didn't need before. I mean, it is now going to be, there is going to be a tank sitting somewhere. There will be. Mm. So by convention, tanks are cylindrical and they sit in the corner of the bathroom or whatever you've got, or they sit in an airing cupboard. Uh, And you're right, people have surrendered space. The advantage, if there was one, of combi boilers is that you get that space back. But of course, most people still want a linen cupboard or an airing, what well, they would have called an airing cupboard. So there's still a well, cupboard. When I was a kid, we had an airing cupboard. Yeah, exactly. I haven't seen an airing cupboard for years because we have combi boilers now. That yeah, you require your sheet somewhere, sure. Oh, I keep them in a cupboard. It's called a cupboard. But it's not an airing cupboard. It's just a... Okay, so what we're going to see is, I think... What... Oh, the return of the airing cupboard. What we're going to see, we've also seen the return of the airing cupboard. But also, I think what we're going to see is... Um, as I say, by convention, cylinders were vertical. Uh, we may see there are already horizontal format cylinders which can sit in attic spaces, okay. for example, under eaves. Those already exist. Um, we are going to see, I think, new form factors, so shapes of cylinders as the manufacturers start to be more creative to deal with exactly the problem you're outlining. Okay. Yeah. And we're also going to see the increased use of um, thermal batteries, so heat batteries. Okay, stop on batteries. I'm going to ask you about that in a minute. But we've got um, different shape things. It is worth saying, now that, again, I'm, I'm sounding like it's a sort of retro discussion, nostalgia discussion. When I was a kid, we had a big hot water tank. And when you touched it, it was lovely and warm, which I have a feeling was telling you that it wasn't really very efficiently insulated. So the heat was coming out of the hot water into the room, which didn't matter because it was actually heating the home. But they are very well insulated now. You shouldn't be touching it. It shouldn't be hot when you touch it. Correct. Modern cylinders, if you've got your hand on them, you won't feel them warm at all. Your air and cupboard isn't going to be very warm. Uh, That's a good thing. But you can control the heat in an air and cupboard instead. Right. There is also this issue of Legionnaire's disease, a disease, I mean, it has been potentially fatal, but which lives and thrives in warm water and and shower systems and air conditioning systems and the likes. Even in car, I think in some car screen wash (laughs) tanks, it has been found. Legionnaire's disease, it can be a risk in a warm, hot water environment. In our industry at the moment, most installers will, if they're putting in a hot water cylinder driven by the heat pump, they will configure in the control strategy uh, what we call a sterilization um, cycle. You normally run it overnight, particularly if you've got a time for use tariff, the electricity is cheaper. And again, typically that would be done with an immersion. So your cylinder is sitting at whatever storage temperature the um, installer has configured um, for your system. Uh, And that's a calculation based on how many tapping outlets you've got you know, flow rates, depth of your bath, all those sorts of things. Um, They will configure it so that the cylinder will be sitting at 55 degrees, say, and you'll use an immersion to to lift up that last five, six degrees to get it above 60 degrees and hold it there for an hour or so 
once a week. But basically once a week, you really want it to get quite hot. At the moment, that is the accepted wisdom. There is a lot of debate going on at the moment about hot water for exactly this reason. So the Committee on Climate Change have been considered this, given us a lot of thought about how we deal with domestic hot water because of the, the perceived risk of Legionnaires' disease. So we should say Legionnaires basically likes warm water, comfortably warm water, doesn't it? This is, this is the thing. Yes, but it's a sliding scale. 60 degrees is not, an, is not a cutoff point, actually. Okay. 60 degrees is the point at which growth of Legionella is deemed to be so small that it's no longer a real risk. So you could store at lower temperature, and actually most of our industry will store at slightly lower temperatures because the lower the temperature, the more efficient the heat pump. And it's a brave person that stands under a shower at more than about 42. Yeah, no, no, of course, you're not using water directly out of the um, yeah, you're mixing, tank. You're, mixing you're not it. using that water. You're mixing it with cold, but obviously... If the tank is 40 degrees, you have to mix it with more, you have mix it with less cold. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That's why in our world, cylinders tend to be a bit bigger than the cylinders that you'd find in a, in a typical standard uh, system boiler scenario where you've got a, a gas boiler with a hot water cylinder. Okay. So now you've got a system which is, um, needs a big cylinder and needs an immersion heater to get rid of the disease, which you're going to um, be encouraging by the system you've created. There is all the, the I'm, I'm paraphrasing in the most negative way, but everybody's heard. Don't worry, don't, don't come back. There is this, you've mentioned it, there is this other technology called the heat battery, which gives you more hot water for a smaller volume. Now, I don't understand. There's a company called Sunamp who do it. Uh, I think they're based in, in Scotland. They are, they, yeah. Sunamp, members of the Federation. I'm okay, saying. Sunamp. Um, what is a heat battery? How does that work? So in a Sunamp scenario, they're using what we call a phase change material to store thermal energy in a much more um, concentrated volume. And typically, it's about a quarter of the volume for the same uh, energy storage. So a cylinder is basically storing energy. So we're back to kilowatt hours, my friend kilowatt hours here. So in a hot water cylinder, you've got X number of kilowatt hours of stored hot water. In a thermal battery, you can have the same number of kilowatt hours so it'll give you the same amount of hot water out but you're storing it in a much smaller volume and because they are rectangular they're cubic boxes you can slot them in under staircases for example where you wouldn't be able to get a full size do they work do they actually yeah. work absolutely have you ever found died or have you ever had a shower I've, I've not had one actually i've not experienced one but yeah we've got a lot of uh, a lot of their product is going in with heat pumps now, quite a bit of their output, of course, just has immersions in it. They're just using electrical devices to heat them up. But increasingly, they're going in alongside heat pumps for exactly the reasons that you've uh, you talked about, space saving. Um, it tends to be a bit more expensive at the moment. But again, this is all about volumes in the market. So, I mean, that, 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 that is an interesting technology. So there's, you've got a heat pump, you've got a, you've got a water tank heated by the heat pump, you've got a water tank heated by an immersion heater or some combination of those two, and you've got a heat battery, heat pump or heated or, yep. or, 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 or immersion heated. You've got quite a lot of choices, and you can even get continuous flow, but that is really expensive because heat pumps don't go that high. Yes. It, what it does is it restricts the flow rate, so it can only drive a relatively small number of showers, for example. The other thing we should just talk about is that if you've got air-to-air -air heat pumps for your space heating, which you then use reversibly in the summer for cooling, you need a different solution for your hot water, which could be an immersion. It could be a heat battery with an immersion. It could be a heat pump hot water cylinder. Okay, so this is not a heat dedicated product. A second heat pump especially yep. for the hot water. Oh, it's a cylinder which has a small heat pump built into the top, vented to outside, and so you're still using heat pump, but it's just dedicated to that cylinder. And that is a product which we're going to see, I think we're going to see quite a bit more of. I want to finish. You're, you're, you're not worried about hot water. I'm, I wonder whether you should be worried about hot water, as people will just say, I like continuous flow. They are going to find that their experience with hot water is every bit as good as it would be from their combi boiler. And, and if it isn't, it's not the problem of the technology, it's the problem of the quality of the design of the system. So the fact is the technology will cope with whatever you want to throw at it. 
you've got to understand what the demands are going to be in the house. So I had a developer who put in a, he built a house, couldn't sell it, thought the way to fix it was put in this massive shower with jets coming at you from all directions. We'd already got a pretty large cylinder in there. And he showed this to me and said, what do you think? And I said, what have you done? That cylinder is going to be empty in sort of four and a half minutes or something because your flow rate in this mega shower you put in that would take six people in it. Uh, so you've got to understand. And you've got to pull into it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, designing properly, installing properly, all of that, obviously. Great topics for later episodes of the Happy Heat Pump podcast. Um, that's enough for today. Do subscribe, do like, do comment, do email us questions, comments, happy heat pump pod at gmail.com. That's the email address. We'd love to hear your questions. We will do some clinics where we uh, discuss problems you may have or queries you may have about heat pumps. In the meantime, next time, we're going to be asking, will I be forced to install a heat pump? forced by someone. Do join us there.